the building we uh, we built in, in Whistler is uh, the first Canadian passive house. So um, the idea was to contribute in some way to uh, the first Green Olympics. So that's what we heard in Europe about four years ago. So we came over. Uh, the project started four years ago and introduced the idea to build the passive house in, in Whistler. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's uh, where we are right now. So during the games, it was the uh, it was hosting um, the, the Olympic team, the Austrian Olympic team, okay. and now we have had the transfer to the municipality of Whistler. Oh, great! So I, I understand that the municipality of Whistler owns the site. What will it be used for now? Right now, it's or it will be transferred into. Um, a mountain bike club and a cross-country skiing club um, house. Perfect. Clubhouse. So it's a nice resource for the community after the games. I think so too. Yeah, it's yeah. a very nice legacy. Yeah. Excellent. Now, tell me a little bit about the house. What, what are what are the products that are used in the house? What uh, what were you focusing on specifically to try and make this a, a a passive house or a green home? Well, generally, a passive house is extremely energy efficient buildings. A uh, building. So it. Uh, reduce the energy consumption roughly by 90% to Canadian average. And to achieve that, the first thing what we need is a very good envelope, which means uh, very good insulate or insulation. Um, triple pane glass is mandatory, insulated frames and so on. So almost like a thermos flask. Right. And a thermos flask is working in both directions. So with iced tea in summer, and uh, hot coffee in the winter time. Wow. So that's that's the major step. And then for sure you also take care about the plug loads. So light, natural daylight, and the efficiency of the appliances and so on. So a 90% reduction is substantial. Roughly, yeah. roughly, yeah. So, and, and you focus primarily on energy re reduction with the home. Yeah. Um, and I think from, uh, from hearing a little bit that I know about the uh, passive house, I understand that there are, are very few VOCs used in the home, so seas and formaldehyde and so on are uh, basically more or less forbidden in Europe. Okay. So, uh, and the house was actually brought from and, Europe. So. Yeah, that's the exotic part because of sponsorship and so on. So this is completely prefab in Austria and was shipped over. I see. Okay. So, um, but yeah, we are looking forward and I'm, I'm working on several other projects here in BC. So, And we will see in other provinces as well passive houses over the next, hopefully this year. Uh, but over the next two, three years, I can picture quite a few more. Great. How many passive houses are there existing today? According to the passive house standard, we have roughly about 20,000 buildings built until now. Terrific. The very first one, 1991, so that's where, where the whole thing started. Yeah. And I think the most important ancestor of the passive house is actually a building in, in Saskatchewan, uh, in Regina. That was built in 1977. Really? Wow. Yeah. Okay. How do people find out more about passive houses? Uh, two possibilities, or well, just basically um, uh, go to passivehouse.ca. Okay. Um, there's another group. It's passivebuilding.ca, and generally Google passive house, and you find a whole bunch of different information. Or you could go to my homepage, which is buildingevolution.ca. Okay. Tremendous. Dr. Rimmer, thank you oh. so much for taking the time to speak with pleasure. us.